Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here lady, where Karens mistake regular Joe Schmo customers as employees. And in today's episode, you'll hear a crazy story where Karen stalks OP in a grocery store, and it gets pretty wild. I hope you guys enjoy the stories today, and do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's dive in. So when I was a young kid, I was walking down the sidewalk from the woods, where I was climbing some trees and messing around, when I see a lemonade stand that some kids were getting ready, and I approached the stand. I was waiting to see how much the lemonade cost, when I see a Karen jogging along the sidewalk towards the stand. Now the kid who was running the stand had gone back inside to get things for the stand, leaving me alone by the table. So Karen approaches me and she says, Hey kid, can I get a glass of lemonade? Now I didn't think much of it, and I responded that it wasn't my lemonade stand, but Karen wasn't having it. I start walking away, but then she said, Ahem, I asked for some lemonade, and you are a lemonade stand, are you not? Now she said that in a really bratty voice. I once again said that I didn't own the lemonade stand. The Karen then grabs my shirt and pulls me back to the stand saying, You know you work here, now get me some lemonade, you brat. At this point I get scared and ran off down the sidewalk with Karen yelling after me. So I got home and I thought it was over, but 15 minutes later there was a knock at the door. The woman had followed me to my house. So my mom answered to see the Karen standing there and she asked, Can, can I help you? Karen says, Your son assaulted me and he refused to serve me lemonade. Now at that my mom was bewildered. She said, What lemonade? My son's not selling lemonade, that's the neighbor's lemonade stand. At this, Karen starts looking nervous, and she says, Well, your son touched me. I thought you'd want to know. And that's when my mom shuts the door and she locks it. I haven't seen the Karen since. Some people are just so insane and incredibly entitled. Hey, you know you work here, kid, so serve me some lemonade. Like, Karen, it's a lemonade stand, not a Walmart. Seriously, sometimes I just question exactly how they made it into adulthood, still thinking and acting this way. And the fact that the woman followed OP to his house... Like, you should have called the cops on her at that point to teach her a lesson. So the morning after a good rowdy kickback in our apartment, my roommate and I go to the orange hardware store, after noticing some holes in the walls. My roommate goes to find plaster, and I go find paint. I get to the paint department, and I'm looking through the paint swatches to remember what our walls look like. I then pick out a color that's probably the closest, and if not, I can just mix my own paint, since I'm an art miner. There is no employee at the paint mixing station, so to kill some time before one comes along, I just put the swatch in my hoodie and then sort the paint swatches properly, because mild OCD. And then it comes. I hear, ahem. I turn around to see Karen, and she says, Hey, I need you to do your job and mix me some paint. Now at this, I stare blankly at her as my hangover's blocking my ability to respond, and she says, Hello, I'm talking to you. Mix my paint. Fortunately, my brain decides to turn on again, and I say, uh, I, I don't work. I then get cut off by Karen, and she says, I saw you sorting that color wall. Were you about to say that you don't work here? Only a lazy employee would say something like that to not help customers. I told her, ma'am, I'm gonna be honest, I'm really hungover, and your screeching is making me want to puke. Now that statement went as well as you would expect. Karen sighs and says, ugh, you've gotta be kidding me. You are such a terrible worker. Do I need to find a manager and have you fired? She then storms off. So once she left, I hear chuckling down the aisle behind me. Lo and behold, my roommate listened to most of it and he's laughing his ass off. He asked if I got the paint and I explained the first part of the confrontation and told him I'm waiting on an employee to come back. We decide to wait for the manager because we know for sure she's going to be stomping back with one. Now, since my friend and I live for this kind of stuff, we think, hey, Maybe he'll mix our paint before we're kicked out. So we wait a few more minutes and George, an employee, walks up, oblivious to what just transpired. We tell him what we need and he starts mixing our paint. A few minutes later, Karen arrives with the manager and she says, That's him. That's the one that called me an orangutan whore. He's so disrespectful. He needs to be fired right now. Pointing at me. The manager then says, George? Wow, I'm frankly surprised you'd say such a nasty thing to a customer. At this, George says, Uh, what now? Karen then says, No, no, not him. The scrawny one in that hoodie. He even told me he's drunk. Now at this, the manager looks at me and he looks confused and says, Ma'am, 
he doesn't work here, but I can ask him to leave for insulting you. Karen then says, No, he definitely works here. I saw him working. He was sorting the color swatches. I then say to her, Okay, well, consider today my last day then. I quit. She says, You can't quit. I want you fired. By now, our paint's done mixing, and I asked George if he'd like to escort us to the front. I've never seen a morning shift employee brighten up so fast. Karen's being belligerent, and the manager tries to calm her down with coupons. My roommates, George and I, leave paint as fast as possible, and I can still hear her screeching from the cashier stand. I explained what really happened, and he laughed, and he says he'll tell the manager the situation. Now initially, my roommate and I were gonna go straight home, but we had to see the outcome of this. We had time, so we showed George where we parked and where we were sitting, and he agreed to come back out once the orangutan whore was gone. The police ended up having to be called just to escort her out, but she wasn't arrested. Manager and George come out to the car, and as George had already explained what happened, the manager profusely apologized. We laughed it off, and I said something along the lines of, it was worth getting out of bed for this, despite the hangover. We were so kindly informed that Karen had come back later that day, and she had vandalized some of the yard equipment that's always on display, and she was arrested. Serves her right. My goodness, now Karen, my biggest question is why would you lie and insult yourself to that degree? Like, she literally could have said anything else <laughs> since she was just making up baloney. She could have said that the employee called her a big fat tree stump. But no, she chose to go with orangutan whore. Like, what a creative insult that was. Okay, so I finally met one in the wild. The infamous Karen and I couldn't help but laugh so hard at this lady, only angering her more. So today, I was shopping for my family at a grocery store, something I dislike on Sundays, as it's a madhouse, and therefore, I usually order my groceries. But today, I needed a break from my amazing family, after so much togetherness over the past few days. We buried my dear mother-in-law on Friday, after an aneurysm that shocked us all. Like I said, I needed a break, even though I'm on chemo, and took it yesterday. I usually do it on Saturday so I don't miss work and so my students don't see their teacher looking deathly ill. Anyway, back to the story. Now as I mentioned earlier, I dislike shopping on Sundays, but here I was, ready to tackle the crowds with my on a mission stare. I had one earbud in listening to a book and the other dangling out so people could not only see that I was listening to something and therefore not approach me, but also know that I could hear them if I was in the way or something. The store has produce in the front and their employees wear blue collared shirts with khakis or black pants. Or a blue apron with khakis or black pants. And always shoes and a visor or baseball cap. Today, I'm sporting a navy blue shirt with red, purple, and light blue flowers. I had my jeans rolled up to just above my ankles. I was wearing platform sandals and my pink sunglasses on top of my head. I look nothing like their wonderful employees. I'm pushing a blue shopping cart and looking at produce, minding my own business, when Karen makes her first appearance. Karen clears her throat. I move to the side, assuming that she wants to look at the blackberries on sale for 5 bucks. My book is getting interesting, so I don't pay her much mind. I then hear her say, Ahem, clearing her throat again. And she says, Excuse me? I say to her, I'm sorry, I'm almost done. She then says again, exasperated, I said, Excuse me? Are you done yet? Now mind you, I'm walking away with my cart at this point, so yeah, I'm done, dummy. I say to her, all yours. They look good. It's a good price, huh? Karen says, yeah, but I want the one you got since it looks like you got the best ones. I say to her, I think they all look good. Sorry. I then leave to go to the bananas, and she says, Well, that was rude. She says that loudly and at no one in particular. I keep shopping, laughing at how I just encountered a Karen of sorts, but thankfully made it out unscathed. So I thought. Next up is the bakery department. I'm picking up some sweets for my boys who are age 4 and 6, and my husband for breakfast, since my husband's on bereavement, and he's gonna be taking the boys to school. I can see the Karen still following behind me, and just after I pick up a package of donut and put it into my cart, she screams, I was gonna get those! I'm thinking, oh, here we go again. She says, it's not fair, you are taking all the good stuff for yourself. I then say to her, well, I guess you should get ahead of me then? She says, uh, no, you need to share with the customers. I told her I believe the store has a first come first serve policy, but whatever. Karen says, customers should not have to wait for you to get their stuff. 
Now at this point, I'm not realizing that she thinks I work here, and I tell her, I don't have to cater to you. I then walk away with my donuts, and Karen screams, I said I wanted those. Now I am ignoring her and walking away, and Karen's not happy at all about this. I go up and down the frozen aisle quickly, as I was getting popsicles for my boys. I'm in the fish department when Karen makes her way to me again. She says to some innocent older lady, Don't you hate when entitled brat employees take things and hide them for themselves? The lady nervously smiles at her as she continues on and says, They think they're so special and they ignore the paying customers. Now I actually laughed hard at her nonsense, and I respond as the lady and Karen are blocking my path, well, I always assume that they're not working on break or something. I haven't worked retail in many years, but I think everyone should at some point, as it helps one appreciate how difficult it can be. The innocent lady smiles at me and says, You are so right. This enrages Karen, but she's yet to go off, so I keep shopping. I'm looking at the wine section, trying to figure out if I want to get another bottle or actually drink what I have at home, when again, psycho Karen approaches. Now I naively thought maybe she heard me when I said that I don't work in retail, but nope, she says, I suppose you're gonna get some wine too? I tell her, nope, I'm just gonna drink what I have at home, but this is good if you want a decent bottle. Karen says, I should have known you're an alcoholic. I then laugh and said, what? An employee who uses their discount to get some cheap wine. You are so sad, she says. I say to her, actually you, my dear, are the sad one. I don't work here, so please leave me alone and stop following me. I'm done with your entitled behavior. Karen then rips my headphone out of my ear and says, take those out. I say to her, excuse me, do not touch me again, lady. Karen says to me, I've had enough of you and your sad alcoholism. I say to her, that's so funny because I've had enough of you and your stupid behavior. Karen says, do not lie to me. I know you work here. I tell her, no, but I do shop here regularly, so maybe you've seen me here. I've never worked for the store ever. At this point, she tells me to wait right here as she's going to go get the manager. She then reaches into my cart and she takes my donuts. I grab them out of her hands and she took off yelling again, red in the face, She's screaming manager over and over again. I walk away, and surprisingly, two other customers come up to me, and they say, what the heck was that lady's problem with you? I tell them, I don't know, I guess she thinks I work here. We chat and then go back to shopping because we hear Karen still hollering about needing a manager, and none of us wanted to deal with her brand of crazy. I head to the other non-grocery side of the Mega Mart and get what I need and head to the checkout, feeling grateful that I managed to get what I needed without further incident, until I'm standing in line, cartful, when I hear the god-awful voice of Karen. Karen walks up to me and says, I reported you to your manager, and she said she'll talk to you later. She then puts her hands on her hips and says, You need to let me go in front of you, since I am a customer. I told her, I don't know who you talk to, but again, I don't work here. And I've waited for two other customers to get through the line beforehand, and while I can see that your cart has less than mine, I don't think I'll offer you anything, since you've been insufferably narcissistic, and you've displayed downright disgusting behavior. The Karen loses it at this point, and she rams me with her cart. She starts screaming, saying, I'm getting your manager, you'll be sorry. Now, I'm not so happy with this lady and her nasty attitude. Now, normally, I would have let someone with a few small things go ahead of me, but not today, as I just wanted to get home and get to bed. I'm lucky enough that my chemotherapy doesn't render me bedridden like it does most people, but I don't exactly feel great. The kind employee notices me and asked if I need assistance, and he said that they'd already called the manager after the incident with the lady. And normally, I'd say no thank you, but I take him up on his offer and sit on the blue benches in front of his lane, while he and another employee unload and reload my cart. The manager comes up as I'm getting to pay with this psycho Karen. The manager says, is this the lady you're talking about? Karen screams, yes, she was so rude and she took all of the good things. I bet she steals too. Now, the manager looks perplexed, and he says, um, she's not an employee. She shops here often, ma'am, so maybe you've seen her here? Karen says, listen, I don't understand why you're covering for her. Ma'am, even if she worked here, which she doesn't, employees are allowed to buy whatever they please, and again, I'm sorry she doesn't work here. I then say, please, just let me be. I'm feeling quite ill, but if you need to look at a video or something, I'll wait. 
The employee who saw her hit me says, Hey, I think you should look at the video in my lane too. At this, Karen screams, I did nothing wrong. Manager looks at her and says, No one says you did. Some other employee comes out at this point, and I think he was store security. He pulls the manager aside, and I can hear him talking to the manager and telling him, I think you'll find the lady in pink was repeatedly harassing the lady in blue, and she even hit her. He then turns to me and says, we can produce the video if you want to press charges. I tell him, I just want to get home, I think I'm going to be sick. Karen starts screaming, call the cops, call them, they will see that she's a thief. I tell her, okay, I'm so over you lady, I will gladly wait for police to arrive and I will press charges as you've harassed me repeatedly, attempted to damage my headphones, and you've hit me. Karen screams, liar, you stole my donuts. No, I merely took back my donuts that you took out of my cart. The manager then says, let's review the tapes. They end up calling the police, and the police officer reviewed the tapes with the manager in the back room, as Karen sat there smugly with a smile on her face, expecting vindication. The police officer then asks for the statements, and Karen gladly jumps in first. I'm visibly sick at this point, and the officer asks me if I'm gonna be okay. I tell him I'm in chemotherapy, and I don't feel so good. This seems to anger Karen, who begins yelling at me as it's not my turn to speak. The officer then asked her to shut up, and she doesn't, so he handcuffs her and said that she was going to be charged with disrupting the peace, regardless if I wanted to press charges against her for harassment and repeated assault, amongst other things. At this point, Karen went white as a ghost. I did press charges, which I would have dropped, but since she made me throw up in public, I wanted her to be humiliated too. The manager then gave me a gift card for my troubles, and I planned on using my gift card for some classroom items and food for my homeless students. I told the manager that I didn't need the gift card, but she insisted. And when I told her what I'm using it for, the $20 became $100. My students are going to have food for the weekend for several weeks. Thank you to Karen and M, the Thrifty Acres. What a crazy story, guys, and I personally think that Karen was a bit loony. But I'm so glad OP pressed charges on this crazy woman, and she ended up arrested. I also love the fact that OP's using the gift card for her students, though. What a great teacher. Okay, so I know how much you guys love hearing wholesome stories, so I need to balance out the crazy Karen ones with a few stories that will make you smile. So this was quite a few years ago, and I was wearing my high school uniform at the time. It was khaki pants and a bold colored polo shirt, which did make a lot of people think that I was an employee of whatever store I was in. This was nothing close to the white shirts and green aprons of the employees at the fabric store, however. Anyways, I'm in the same aisle as these two older ladies that seemed lifted straight out of stock photos. A professional lady and a sweet grandmother. Now, the sweet grandmother asked me where she could find the yarn, and since I did know where it was located, I told her unfortunately it was at the opposite corner of the store. She thanked me and headed in that direction. Professional lady sniffed dismissively and said, Well, that was rude. I didn't think much of it, and only knew she was even talking to me since she was looking directly at me, so I say, mm, no, I just knew where it was anyway, so not a big deal. She says, no dear, you were rude, it's your job to show customers where to find what they're looking for, not tell them, you certainly wouldn't be working for me with that attitude. I tell her, oh, uh, I don't work here, I'm just shopping. The lady then looks at me over the top of her glasses, turns red, and hastily remembers that she has to be somewhere else now. Later, as I was heading to the checkout line, I saw sweet grandmother again, and she flagged me down, taking my hand after I walked over to her. Grandma says, You know dear, I realized as I was getting my yarn that you don't work here, but it was very sweet of you to help me anyway. She then lets go of my hand and headed for the exit, leaving a caramel candy in my hand as she left. I love caramels. So this took place way back in 2007, when I was in my early 20s working full-time at an auto parts store. I drove a white 1982 Nissan Pulsar. It was ancient, but no complaints. And that's relevant, I promise. It's 7am, and I'm driving to work one morning, and I pull up at a crosswalk to allow a dog walker past me. Without warning, my passenger door opens, and a gentleman hops in next to me. He then nods, says a friendly hello, and he buckles his seatbelt. He was a sweet-faced, white-haired senior wearing a sweater and brown pants, definitely in his 80s. I stared in shock and stumbled my words, totally bewildered by what was happening. He then saw my expression and said, Oh, I'm sorry, the train station please. Now, that's when I saw the taxi rank near the crosswalk. 
taxis here are white, but definitely not hatchbacks like my car was. He had a big, cheery smile on, and I was still puzzled. I then realized that the local train station was two streets away from where I worked. I was heading past there anyway, and he didn't seem like an axe murderer, so why not? I relaxed a little, shrugged, and said, Uh, sure thing. So we drove off together, and he peered out the window smiling. He said, You taxis are much quicker these days. Ah, it's a beautiful day for a train ride, don't you think? He then looked at me with a big smile and said, I'm Jerry. Lovely to meet you. I'm meeting my friend for breakfast today. I'm so excited. I haven't been on the train for years. All of my friends have passed on, and I don't really need to go out of town. Well, not until I made a new friend recently. It's funny how life goes, isn't it? An old codger like me with a breakfast date? Can you imagine? I tell him, oh, well, that sounds very lovely, Jerry. Where are you off to? He cheerily described the town he was visiting, an hour away by train, and he described the store he wanted to visit while he was there. We chatted the whole way, and I was so taken by how upbeat and cheerful he was. We then pulled into the offloading zone outside the train station, and he pulls out his wallet. I immediately jumped in saying, Oh, no charge, I don't have my meter working yet. Now, telling a lie was way better than deflating his happy spirits with an embarrassing situation. He was chuffed. It was a chilly morning. I then walk him to the ticket office, where there was a heated waiting room that he could sit in until his train arrived. He then thanked me, smiled and said, It's a beautiful day for a train ride. You take care now. I told him, Take care, Jerry. It's been 11 years now, and I often find myself smiling when I remember him. Oh, that sounds like such a sweet old man. He sounds like the person that you can just sit and talk for hours with. Definitely one of my favorite I don't work here stories. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here lady. Guys, if you enjoyed the stories today, do remember to hit that thumbs up. And if you missed yesterday's episode, an entitled mother-in-law calls 911 when OP bans her from his house. It's such a crazy story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you in the next one. We love you.